This week on the Internet Cafe, a Halloween special, The Dark Side of the Web. Meet Lady Caroline, your web guide to haunted houses, vampires, and ghosts. Witches have websites, too. No pointy hat, no broom, but this webmistress will guide you through the covenant of the goddess. Want a virtual nightmare? Try Bad Mojo, in which you live your life as a cockroach. We'll meet the makers of this gruesome game. And Afterlife, a new sim game that lets you design heaven and hell. Plus, free software, Doom and Warcraft coming your way on our Cyber Blast. It's all happening tonight at the Internet Cafe. The Internet Cafe is made possible in part by Intel. One innovative idea always leads to another. Now there are connected CD-ROMs that link rich multimedia with related information on the Internet. The connected CD-ROMs, it's the Intel Pentium processor. Hi, and welcome to the Internet Cafe. I'm Stuart Chaffee. We're here at Cybersmith in Palo Alto, California again. Lots of interesting things going on here. Lots of interesting people to meet, including, of course, Jane Wither and Andrew DeVries. And we have Halloween upon us, so we're going to spend tonight kind of looking at the dark side of the web with ghosts and vampires and witches and that kind of stuff, okay? Speaking of witches, actually, I'm going to be interviewing the high priestess of the Wiccan religion in this area. And she's actually what you and I would consider to be a witch. So There's a witch website. Exciting. A witch well, of course, website. A real witch. Well, we're going to meet this woman sitting right over here. She's actually Carrie Carolyn. She's kind of a high priestess of the dark side of the net. She has a site actually called the Dark Side of the Web. She has over, I think it's 1,900 links to various sites um, that deal with horror, horror movies. Would you know that uh, when a body dies, what actually happens to it? Well, this is something that I found on one website, of the sites right? that was There's on the answer. Yeah. Very wow. scary stuff. All right, speaking of spooky, way over there are two guys who created the game Bad Mojo. Now, this is very spooky. In the game, you go through a metamorphosis, and it turns you into a cockroach, and you play this entire game as a roach. It is very interesting. We're going to take a look at it a bit later. So lots of cool Halloween-y type things coming up at the Internet Cafe. Okay, we are with Rowan Fairgrove. You are the web weaver of the local chapter of the Covenant of the Goddess website. And can you tell me a little bit about this, the, the particular website that you uh, take, uh, take If you of? come to our site, obviously you'll find information on Covenant of the Goddess. But I've also tried to make it a networking site. You can go out to other sites full of links, sites with content, um, shops, events, um, can I get information, information about magic and, and magic, earth religion, spells? goddess spirituality, um, Wicca, and uh, other magical religions, uh, as the true, which is the Norse pagan religion. Okay. And, uh, so now, y with the covenant of the goddess, y you are, would consider yourself to be a witch. Is that that's correct? correct? Okay. And now, being a witch, in in my mind, has always been a lady with you know the crooked nose and the pointy hat. And you definitely don't have a crooked nose, and there's no pointy hat that I see. So tell me a little bit about what being a witch in the Wicca religion is all about. Well, I did consider bringing the pointy hat just because it's a bit of fun this time of the year. But um, I'm a priestess. And uh, I'm a priestess of an earth religion based in the traditions of old Europe. Okay. And, uh, so is that like the Celtic tradition? Because I know a lot of your websites had mentioning about Celtic sites and history. That's and right. My ancestors are primarily from Scotland. Okay. Hence and the red hair. Yeah. And so um, that's the part of the, of the religions of old Europe in which I'm most interested. Okay. And now tell me a little bit about if, if I was interested in getting information about spells or... Um, you know, witchcraft or what Wiccan religion is all about or, you know, the whole topic of alternate uh, religions, what would be some of the websites you'd recommend? Well, for spells and such, the Lysator uh, Neo-Pagan Neo -Pagan Archive okay. is an amazing content site. Uh, Ceci, the woman who runs it in Sweden, just gets every piece of, of spell, of ritual that it comes across the net and puts it in the archive so that people can access it. Now, I know in uh, in religions uh, such as yours that Halloween is a very special time of year. What, what is Halloween? Because Halloween for me is trick-or-treating and getting dressed up when I was a little kid. So what is Hallow's Eve, I think is the term that you right. use, is what's that all about? Well, it's the New Year and for us the day starts at dusk. Okay. And uh, much like the Jewish tradition, the dark time comes before the light, the germination in the soil before the flowering into sunlight. And the year is the same way. So this is our New Year and Halloween itself is the time between the two years. Okay. So the veil is thin between the worlds and the ancestors and the fairies can come through and come door to door 
luck visiting. Kind of like trick and trick or treating. Exactly like trick or treating. And how generous you are determines how lucky you are. So, so the ancestors are the ghosts that we see. Everybody gets dressed up as a ghost That's and right. witch and those types of things. That's really interesting. Now, one of the other things about about Hallow's Eve, I think, is is the. the issue of divination. I think that's a very big thing that goes on that's in right. Halloween. It's the beginning of the year. Got to find out what's what's going to happen to you this year. Exactly. So there's some websites that, that we were talking about earlier that we can actually look at where you yes. can get, uh, what was it, we had tarot cards and, and I Ching, I Ching yeah. and rune reading. Runes. And runes are typically very uh, Celtic in, in tradition, no, is that right? No, they're Wrong. actually Norse or Anglo-Saxon okay. in tradition. It's the Norse or Anglo-Saxon alphabet. And the site I recommend for divination is one by Mary Greer and they point to everything having to do, especially with Tarot, but um, you can start there and find anything you want to find about divination. So I can actually find out what's in store for me for the next few months then? Give it a try. I think I will. Well, and are there any other things that, about websites related to the Wiccan religion that would be important if people were I'm wanting to understand a little bit more about the na nature religions, some other places to find out about the uh, chapter and some other stuff? Well, there's the High Plains Magic page, has some excellent links, and the um, Celebrate the Earth page. Um, I went, actually, I went out on uh, Alta Vista today, and there were over 15,000 sites with the word Wicca in them. That's a lot of so information. <laughs> so there's um, definitely some interest in there. That's right. Uh, Yahoo, under People in Society, Religion, Witch Wicca, and Witchcraft, you can find a lot of links. Um, we're out there. Definitely. Yeah, so if you want information, the web is the place to come. So now how does, with, with any new religion, uh, co communication and, and telling people about what you're all about is really important. So I, I assume that the web has definitely made an impact on how you've, how you've been able to continue the religion and, and Well, the, the Covenant itself was formed as a networking organization. And so with the Internet as the ultimate network, we're definitely out there trying to get our message across. But witchcraft is a very loaded word in this culture and very misunderstood. So by being able to publish ourselves and get out what it means to us, we can maybe dispel some of the myths and misunderstandings. Well, thank you very much for the time. I really have in enjoyed learning a lot more about the Wiccan religion. Thanks, Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Joel Gods at Sack. The Persians called the cemetery the City of the Silent. You can visit my virtual City of the Silent on the World Wide Web where you can find information about the history and art of the afterlife. Mojo, huh? That it yep. is. All right, now where in the world did you get an idea to have a game with a cockroach as the lead character? Well, it came from our company president, Drew Huffman, who yeah. woke up one night with a cockroach in his ear. Oh, oh yeah. He was like screaming. And the first thing he thought was, let's make a computer game. Let's make a game. <laughs> no, the first thing he said was, take me to the emergency <laughs> room. No one believed him, though. So he had this roach in his ear. And yep. a roach in his ear. So he told this fascinating roach story, which we yes. thought was hilarious. And this made us think, hey, what a great topic for a game. Right, now, there's a kind of a programming reason for using the roach, too, right, which is interesting. That's correct. We wanted to have a game with a very small character, a small sprite yeah. to update on the screen. So it was real quick, and you don't have to wait and wait and so wait. So it's fast, yeah. So we thought. Yeah. Right, now, you, are there, everybody's got, like, a roach story, right? Well, I mean, are there weird things that happen with you guys who were on this team with roaches? There was, th that was one of the things about the game, that, you know, the concept that's really cool is that everybody has an experience with bugs and we've all during the course of the game we had tons of different wacky experiences because we had like a we kept like a thousand roaches well even though I mean nobody has not seen a roach you had some scary experience with a roach now Drew had another one right in which what he went on vacation somewhere he went on vacation and it turned out his camera was infested with cockroaches well, his whole apartment was infested with bugs so he had he brought this camera yeah. and it was filled with bugs <laughs> and he took all these you know pictures of his vacation and when he came back there were like little silhouettes of roaches on the, the on roaches the were inside the camera. Yeah. 
So they made gross. impressions on the film. <laughs> so why not make a game make everybody else just as exactly. gross? Exactly. Share a horrible experience. I know. What, what's the story of the game? You're a cockroach, and how do you get that, and what do you have to do? Well, you're an embittered young entomologist who's just embezzled a whole bunch of money from the university where you work, and you're turned into a roach so that you might see the error of your ways mm -hmm. and change your life. All right, so you become a roach, and then what do you have to do? You sort of just navigate? Is it like sim roach or what? It's not really like a simulation. It's more, it's more like we wanted to make a game that was very immersive. So you saw the world from a roach's perspective. Uh -huh. So you, you're a small little bug that has to navigate through the six rooms of this old decrepit apartment building. And along the way, you encounter all the different obstacles that a roach might encounter. Um, rats and spiders, deadly foes. You also encounter obstacles that prevent you from getting where you need to go. And the world suddenly becomes a vast landscape when you're five minutes So you're not worrying about food and energy. You just no, move around really. as a roach and see what happens. You're just worried about staying alive. Stay now, alive. now, what kind of research did you guys do other than getting bugs in your ears? I mean, did you actually study roaches yeah. to see how to make this lifelike? Well, in addition to having two entomologists as technical consultants, we did have about 3,000 live roaches in the it's office. Total oh tank full of In a box, I hope. In an aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. called it, you buy it, it's called the roach. It was a hideous container full and, of and, and you said there was something, you guys were crawling around pretending you were roaches to know we this? We were down in the basement on our hands and knees, you know, trying to get into the mindset, you know, method acting. We'd walk around, <laughs> we'd walk around looking at the world like this to see what it looked like from a roach's perspective. Now, when you guys went on the road with this, I know you went to Convex, you actually brought some of these roaches with you, kind of, kind of like a, a prop. I mean, what happened with the roaches you were traveling with? Like good yeah. companions? They got out in a real ritzy Chicago hotel. <laughs> And it was, they kind of, we had two Madagascars, and they're big, they're like four yeah. inches. And we brought them on the plane, we were going to bring them to the show, you know, kind of shock value. Then put them in the tub, you know, let them walk around, <laughs> long flight, you know, they're tired. <laughs> and they got out. We didn't know where they were, we were freaking out. We are running around the whole, our whole room looking for them. And we found them about 20 minutes later, after pulling our hair out, they were like wedged up in the shower curtain. Oh, man, the maid found them? No, Thank no, God, no. no. They would have no. kicked us out of the hotel for sure. <laughs> now, after having designed this game and spent all this time with roaches and played the game and so on, I mean, have you changed your attitude about roaches? You think of these guys differently rather than just yucky creatures? Yeah, we, we think of them as fascinating as fascinating creatures. I mean, they've been around for so long. and uh, they're You don't step effort. on them now when you see them? Oh, I'd stomp one if I found it in my <laughs> I kitchen. Wouldn't. I wouldn't. All right, let's get back into the game now. So when you play the game, uh, all you do is just you walk around and discover where you are and there are hostile things you have to figure out what it is. Well, there's obstacles and puzzles. There's things you have to overcome. For example, um, you've got to figure out how to knock your landlord out. You've got to drug your landlord, which for because you need you need to do that in the course he, of the game. Because he's going to try to kill you or something or get well, you. Well, you need to he, you need to hit him to be out cold in order to move through the environment oh, okay. that he's sort of hanging out in. Because you there's well, other I've people. Well, I played this part of the game, so I know what you're talking about. So you've got to figure out how to knock your landlord out. How do you do that when you're a cockroach? Well, other animals in the game give you clues, huh. and they tell you what to do, and they tell you important pieces of information. If you listen to the other bugs and insects in this room, they'll give you some pieces of information that will allow you to knock out this 300-pound guy by dumping pills into his beer, drinks the beer, and so, so the end object is what? To try to de-metamorphosize -metamorph well, or whatever, yeah, to become a human again? Yeah, you've got to become a human again. You've got to work your way back up to your apartment where you live, the guy that you're playing lives. He's kind of out cold. He's in this, like, catatonic uh -huh. state. And once you get all the way through the game and you get back up there, um, you can turn yourself back into a human being. You can kind of reanimate yourself. So this is one creepy game. Now, what's the reaction of people when they first see the game? What do they do? What do, they, do? they usually they either run or they all come gather around the screen to check out. Or they go, yeah, I don't have anything to do with yeah, this game. A few people do that. Yeah. <laughs> they love it or they flee. All right, you guys going to dress up as a cockroach for Halloween? No, we've had enough of roaches. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> right, more. Thanks a lot. On tonight's Cyber Blast, we're going to send you two complete multimedia games plus a little something from Monty Python. What you're seeing over here is the actual data coming into your computer right now. We're sending you these programs and the TV signal at about 2 megabytes per minute. If you don't have a TV modem, you can also get these files off our website on your telephone modem. Doing it that way will take you at least a half an hour. Let me tell you what we're sending you. I'm sure many of you have played Doom, the groundbreaking first-person action game that set a new standard for real-time, on-screen animation and navigation. If you don't yet have a copy of Doom, we're sending you a complete copy right now. Remember, Doom has some violence in it. It is an action game, and you do have to blow up the bad guys. Next, we're sending you another great game. This one is called Warcraft. It's a shareware game and one of the best strategy games out there. It's a little bit like Command and Conquer, if you're familiar with that game, but Warcraft is set in medieval times. 
Lastly, for those of you who like the dark side of humor, we're sending you a sound clip from the movie classic Monty Python and the Holy Grail. For those of you familiar with the movie, you'll know what I mean when I say dead collector guy. If you've never seen the movie, you have to check this out. Remember, we're sending you both complete games and the audio file in under two minutes. Now to download these programs this fast, you do need something called a TV modem. If you need information on how to use or find a TV modem, just check out the Internet Cafe section of our website at www.pctv.com and you'll get all the relevant information. So the download of Doom Warcraft and the Monty Python clip is just about complete. Have fun with your three new programs. That wraps up this Cyber Blast on the Internet Cafe. I'm Laurie Anderson. Now, a few minutes ago, we had someone in here who purported to be an actual witch, and I've heard that you have a site on the web that is the dark side of the web, and you could, can be considered sort of the high priestess of that. I hear you have a huge amount of links. How many links are on your site? 1,900. 1,900. And what are, what are those primarily made up of? Anything creepy or dark or sinister on the web. Anything from gothic to the occult to horror, vampires, death, cemeteries. So is it more of like the fun side of the horror genre or are we talking also death and some real scary things? If it's fun, you're probably sick. <laughs> but, uh, there's a lot of stuff about horror and more of the goofy horror movies like the splatter ones. So what are some of your favorite sites? I like the cabinet of Dr. Casey. It's the horror web page. I like to go read stories there that have been written by people on the net. Now, these are like horror stories in the Stephen King genre of, of horror or something a little more scary? It has a lot of different things on there because it's hundreds of different writers that have contributed. And uh, what else? Is there like movie type stuff on there as well? Or? A lot of sound files, a lot of screams. Screams? Uh, some midi movie. Spanish screams throughout the, <laughs> the, the Movie horror. screams, yeah. Oh, okay, great. And anything relating to you know, graphical images of horror? He has a lot of graphic images, movie stills from old movies. Movie stills, posters, things like that. Excellent. Now, um, there's also a whole portion of the web that I know is sort of devoted more towards things such as forensic medicine, and I've seen sites like that on your web, and also actual virtual cemeteries. Do you have links uh, to those things as well? I do, and there's a lot of pages that have like really gruesome depictions of accident victims. Really? Now, where did you find those? People sent them to me. I didn't go out looking for those, I swear. <laughs> right. Now, how, many, how do you maintain that many links uh, at one time and keep them up and going? I spend about 40 hours a week on it. 40 hours a week? Now, do you receive a lot of fan mail for this, this monument you've built on the Internet? I, I don't know if you can call it fan mail or just scary mail. Like, I'll get vampires mailing me wanting to either drink my blood or give me their blood to drink or something. It's kind of frightening. So these are people who actually think they're vampires and want to talk to you? Yeah. And have they voted you the, the high priestess? or? I don't know. I don't, I don't reply to them. You don't? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> what do you do? Just kind of ignore that it's stuff? It kind of gets deleted and I move on. How many, how many emails would you consider you get a week? During Halloween, I'm getting 400 pieces a day. Wow, so you're a real fan of people out there. And you say it's Halloween. What are some of the things you guys are doing on the, on the web there for Halloween? Well, I did a special web page this month called Yahoo. It's kind of a parody of the, the very popular Yahoo page. Right. It's, except it's orange. And uh, I'm also writing a story with uh, Casey from the cabinet and a couple of the vampire webmasters. A horror, an ongoing horror story? or It won't be ongoing because we don't have time to do it. It'll just be a Halloween story. So what else is on the Yaboo site that's in there for Halloween? There's some pages on the origins of Halloween, how it got started, why we do the things we do. Now these are pages created by other folks? Not something you did yourself? Nope, I don't have the time. <laughs> I'm not creative. <laughs> so what are some of the things that they're showing about the origins of the, of the holiday? I'll talk about the spirits that were believed to walk the earth when the veil between the worlds was at its thinnest. And they'll talk about the old pagan traditions. Which is I, where Halloween really sort of seemed to have evolved mm -hmm. from. That's great. And then what are the other types of Halloween sites you're finding out there? There's a lot where people are showing you some really creative ideas that they've used throughout the years with costumes and decorations, party treats. And so more like what you and your family and kids can do for Halloween, maybe the latest costume and things like that. Yeah, those are the safest pages. I, I cringe when I think about kids coming to visit my pages and that, so I'm glad to see those <laughs> that are kind of wholesome. Now, that, that brings up actually a good point. Now, this is obviously a, a gateway to some pretty far out sites on the Internet. Are you worried about, you know, kids or younger folks maybe coming on and, and seeing something that maybe too scary for them? It does worry me, but I'm not going to censor my site because of it. I'm hoping that their parents will be supervising them while they're, while they're using it. 
complaint and have you received any complaints or, or people saying this is a site that's uh, sort of uh, edifying the, the, the gory? <laughs> well, I know that we're blocked in Surfwatch and other programs like that, which is unfortunate because in my really wholesome pages, like pages on my same site about art or uh, my kids' pages, other people can't get to them. Okay, so there's been some something done on that. Yeah. Already. Well, that's good, that's good. Now, what's next for the dark side of the web? Uh, do you see this just continuing on, or do you have special mm -hmm. plans? I'd like to annotate my links, describe what you get when you go to the site. I'm kind of hesitant to do that uh, because of copyright violations that are already happening just with my links page. And but we'll plus, see. And that may make your site also a lot larger. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it should be a book. <laughs> Any chance you might want to write a book on this? It seems like right now you're kind of a form the foremost expert on it. If I have time. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Alice. And in keeping with the Halloween spirit and the web, we've got Rolf's Horror Page, which you can do a search for on Alta Vista. The many things you can find on uh, Rolf's Horror Page are links to um, horror memorabilia and links to movie sites and number of fiction. The best thing about Roth's horror page is the dark space, which you'll need to find the secret link to get your way out. This is um, Afterlife. It's a SimCity Games by Lucas Arts, and what you're trying to do is cr um, create a heaven and a hell, two levels. And um, if you've ever played SimCity, it's basically you're building, like I said, two different cities. This is hell that I have shown here. If you scroll up, you can see heaven. When first playing this game, I was a little confused about how to make it go. So I highly, highly suggest the tutorial on the right-hand side on the pull-down screen. And go through each of these tutorials, and it will tell you the basics of the game. Uh, don't mess with the manual. If you do these, it will tell you everything you need to know. I also suggest, if you get bored with the basics, to go right into, under the file pull-down menu, go into Lo Senero. And it has um, each, um, it has, I guess, some pre-programmed games in here that have already been done for you or some cities that have been constructed. So right now I have the Dante's Divine Sitcom. And I'll show you on the global pull-down menu. Go to Bad Things and you have different disasters that you can make happen. My favorite is Disco Inferno. And you will see, zoom in, so basically this destroys your city, as Disco does. And of course then you must rebuild your city after this. I, one of the first times I played this game, I um, spent all my money in hell and left one dollar left for heaven, so don't let that happen. I think the most confusing thing about the game is the graphs, which is located under the scroll bar here. And there's a lot of strategy to the game in trying to work with the souls that will be coming to your afterlife, or the ghosts. What you need to do, basically, in the game is to build zones. And by clicking on these bars at the top here, you then come and you, if you hold and drag, this will make things much faster if you hold and drag, you then can build zones, which then the souls then can move into. So that's afterlife. Well, another kind of interesting, a little bit weird evening in the Internet Cafe. Uh, what was your experience with the, the dark, dark side, side of the web? Well, it definitely was the dark side. It was really neat to see Carrie Carolyn's site. She had 1,900 actually web links from everything from sort of the real virtual cemeteries to uh, more of the occult to the old horror movie type sites to Halloween and Halloween was a huge topic on the web right now and everything we're going to do costume research exactly. there exactly it's go. all right on there yeah. and great. which is you <laughs> what do you think well it was really interesting I, I kind of 
blown my whole theory about what a witch is all about. Now, no more pointy hats. No but brooms. No brooms. But actually, it was really interesting to, to look at the Celtic sites and, and know a little bit more about the, what the Wicca religion is all about and, and all of the different neo paganist sites. So it was so nice to hear a history of what Halloween really used to be. So it was kind of neat. Was but she a good witch or a bad witch? I think she was definitely a good witch. Which witch was she? <laughs> it's hard to say. Anyhow, let me just say about bad mojo. I don't know if you saw that thing, but I played, spent a couple hours playing that game as a cockroach. And it is really very strange. After a couple of hours, you start to think like an insect. I mean, the world changes. You can only see this far ahead of you. You bump into things, and everything is dangerous. These big people are walking around, going to step on you. They said it's not Sim Roach, but uh, it's a very interesting experience that is so realistic. You just go through the world as a roach. Starting to worry about him. What do you think? Looking a little scaly. I'm going to have yeah. bad dreams. I'll say that. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week again at the Internet Cafe. The Internet Cafe is made possible in part by Intel. One innovative idea always leads to another. Now there are connected CD-ROMs that link rich multimedia with related information on the Internet. The connected CD-ROMs, it's the Intel Pentium processor.